In this episode, we visit South Lake Union in Seattle, home to the Center for Wooden Boats, the Museum of History and Industry, or as the locals call it, Mohai, and the Historic Ships Wharf at Lake Union Park, where you'll find several historical ships dating from the late 1800s and early 1900s. Allie and I were lucky enough to get a private tour of MV Lotus, a 1909 Edwardian cruising houseboat. She's currently undergoing a restoration of her upper outside deck, but even so, the beauty of her past still shines through. You can reserve the boat for special events or book a stateroom as a B&B for the night. Check out the link below for more information. So come aboard and step back in time. I'm Scott and this is Allie, and we live in Seattle. Over the last several years, we've owned and operated two boats in the Pacific Northwest. And now we're on our search for our liveaboard cruiser. So hit the subscribe button now to come along with us on our boating journey and see where it leads. Come on, this is Scott, our tour guide. Oh, that makes it easy. Nice to meet you, Jonathan. Yes. So you stepped in there as our longtime volunteer and uh, finance guy Dan Hillman would say, you have stepped back in time. Yeah. This is this is how it looked in 1909. This is a saloon. It was uh, been remarkably well preserved over the years. This is pretty much what you would have seen if you walked in back then. Uh, yeah. We haven't changed much. Uh, we haven't remodeled much. It's just been really really well preserved over time. And who was the original owner and uh, what Lotus it was built was for? It was by a local lawyer and businessman named Maurice McMicken. Okay. Uh, he owned uh, the Post Intelligencer newspaper and part of the streetcar system. And among other things, he owned part of a gold mine up in southeast Alaska. Uh, oh. So Lotus was commissioned expressly to, to cruise up to the gold mine. Oh, wow. Okay. So she was designed to to uh, go through the inside passage. So she has massive tankage. Um, she's got 1,500 gallons of diesel forward, uh, 2,000 gallons of water. Um, Holy. So she was, and she's she's extremely stoutly built too. Um, yeah. But uh, for all that, she was also uh, designed for luxury cruising. Okay. Um, McMicken was quite wealthy, so as you walk in here, you find that it looks more like a house than a yeah. porch in most respects. Uh, McMicken was also over six feet tall, which is something you'll notice in most boats yeah. you go through. You won't have much yeah. overhead room, but everywhere in here was designed for him to feel comfortable. Okay. So. And are these original, the, the dishes and the glassware? Yeah, in fact, are these the... Uh... Some of them are monogrammed, and yeah, they are, some of them are the original. Uh, I can't... Not them. At this moment, remember which ones they are, but all of the furniture is original, um, except for the beaver desk, which is uh, which is actually quite older than the rest of the boat. Oh, it's really? actually uh, salvage from this boat, the HBC Beaver, um, and that so that we existed before the boat, and the boat was built around that. My understanding of it. You can see, in fact, um, some of the older pictures of the saloon here. Oh yeah. That is so cool. And I love the smell. It's got that. That old diesel smell? Well, it's just, <laughs> no, it well, just it reminds me of an old home, yeah. Well, it smells good on this boat. If you walked onto a new boat and smelled like this, good. you'd go, God, this stinks. Yeah. So, but it's character on this boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, she's, she's got a lot of the interior art deco um, mm -hmm. kinds yeah. of things that you would have found in houses around that era. In fact, I had a, a 1915 house over in West Seattle for a long time, and very similar, you know, from the from the floors, um, from the leaded glass windows. Uh, I didn't have the cool fireplace. That's yeah, cool that's too. very nice. Um, but this is uh, rookwood tile, uh, which, if you're a tile person, apparently is very impressive. Yeah. I always like the design with the sailboats and the yeah. storm on the water. Uh, rod and gun rack. Oh yeah, look at uh, that. They, they hunted and fished their way up and down the inside yeah. passage. Uh, McMicken was an avid outdoorsman, so 
the early logs are filled with tales of hunting and fishing glory. That is funny. And now you, you this place, normally uh, you can rent this to yes. stay on. Yes. So tell us a little bit about. Um, well, we rent the whole boat out for events. Okay. Um, or as we go forward, I'll show you some of our cabins, but we also allow people just to rent a cabin for the evening. And in fact, we're doing that on a limited basis. Now, okay. Even uh, with COVID, we are following mm -hmm. the state restrictions. Sure. Uh, only having one family group on board at a time. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's somebody coming Monday. Yep. Oh, really? Or even during the refit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, it's, we'll, we'll take a look at that too, but that's mostly uh, affecting the stern of the boat. So gotcha. Okay. Really, uh, impact people are staying aboard. So let's head up here. you. Uh, Lotus was a modern marvel for 1909. So something you'll notice here is an intercom system rather than speaking tubes. Oh, that's funny. Uh, long before most of the city had any kind of phone service, um, you could use an electric connection from the, the bridge mm -hmm. down to the engine room or down here to the hall. Uh, all the electric lights that you see here are original. She never had gas lighting of any wow. sort. Um, she's got two of these bunk rooms here. And is that a sink? That is a fold down Pullman sink, yes. Saves a little space. Every every room had hot and cold running water. Wow. Wow. It's probably better fit than most of the homes in Seattle at that time. Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. Another bunk. Another bunk. Now, do you expect it to ever go cruising again, or is it ever planned to leave the dock, or is it we just We do kind take of... her out a couple of times every every summer. We try and hit the festivals up and down the sound, oh, okay. one or two of them. <clears throat> Um, but it's not, uh, we just go point A to point B mm -hmm. and actually take her out cruising. Okay. That might be a little much right now. Yeah, but it's probably good for the engines and the boat to yes. get out and we'll take a look stretch at the over now later and too. And you can... Excellent. And is there any kind of history on if it's haunted or any, any kind of stories oh like goodness. that? <laughs> <laughs> you got right to the heart of that one, didn't you? <laughs> I don't for a moment believe any of this, but I've had two different people who did not know one another, have, have any contact with each other, um, tell me the same story of a woman dressed in white who walks down from this stateroom, or actually she walks from the saloon down into this stateroom and looks through some of the drawers in here. Oh, that's spooky. I think they were both, you know, little... <laughs> But it's interesting that they would tell you the, the same, same story. Same story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't buy it. <laughs> but yeah, we have two of these queens. Um, okay. Also, they have sinks in them. Uh, well, uh, well appointed. They're yeah. a little, little small when you compare them to the master stateroom up here. So this would have been the owner's suite. This was the owner's suite. Yeah. Okay. This is where McMicken and his wife were. It's got uh, all the same kind of, of uh, outfitting as the saloon, uh, very, very well built. Um, the master head over there has something that you also not find on very many boats, which is a Drink old tub. clawfoot bathtub. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And what was, how many gallons of water does the tank hold? 2,000 gallons okay. in the center line tank, yeah. Oh. Uh, right under here are the old diesel tanks, which we don't actually use anymore because they were cast iron. Um, but there were 1,500 gallons of diesel in there. Look at these cool. Yes. Uh, yeah, those are very cool portholes. Nautical looking portholes on the yeah. boat. For yeah. these. And that's probably, uh, oh, how far back does that picture? I'm not sure how far that back that was, but you can see some things that, uh, the, the radio masts mm -hmm. were up there. We don't have those anymore. Um, we'll see this a little bit when we go up, but there was a, um, some div davits that uh, swung out the launches on either side. Uh, we actually recently found the launch. Um, it's sitting in a shop up in Port Townsend right now waiting to be refinished. Uh, but that was also gasoline powered. Okay. Where did you find it? I don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure who came up with that. And how often do you have to repaint and, and touch up things? It's not so much often as constant. Okay. On something this size, you're always, always repainting something. Yeah. You just kind of work your way around. And after a couple of years, you get back to where you were in the first place and start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. This is the pilot house. Oh, my gosh. It's uh, pretty low tech in comparison to the rest of the boat. So. Yeah. 
this is uh, as much instrumentation as they had <laughs> back really? in 1909, pretty much, yeah. The compass, the wheel, and toot the horn. Um, originally, there was a bunk back here, so the captain could nap okay. uh, along the way. Um, and these charts, All the charts wow. are also not original, but at one point in time, they were lined up from Olympia to Glacier Bay, all in order. Okay. So, so you know where to look for wherever you were. And again, all original fixtures here? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there has been more woodwork redone up here. This is not original. Uh -huh. uh, and in fact, is in progress. Uh, refinishing some of this stuff. Uh, but you can see the, yeah, the floors. floors and floor. Where you're standing, actually. The, so you can see some of the oh, delicate yeah. inlay work. Yeah. And then right behind you there, the plate. Yeah, Lotus. Uh, Oh yeah. Yeah, that's original. But this is sort of the center of social life of mm -hmm. Lotus and kind of always has been, we suspect. And these uh, are original? Yes. In fact, uh, this is built in and I don't know if you noticed, but when you're in the saloon, there's This is the ceiling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. The, the base yeah. of that is the windows for this. Yep. And then has this always been here? No. Okay. Um, originally, Probably this side would have had something similar to this. Oh, okay. Which was a day tank for water supply. Oh. So they would pump uh, water up here and then it would be gravity fed down to the rooms for the day. And then what is this? It's like a chimney or something? It's the stack, yeah. yeah. Okay. From the engine room. Yeah. It doesn't need to be anywhere near that large, but. So we can head back down and head aft. So this is the galley, galley, which is actually one of the places that is the most unlike uh, what it uh, originally was. Originally, this was all engine room um, oh. with a stove and a sink. Um, oh. Because the original engine was huge. And actually, let me grab a picture of that for you. So this is looking back through that door that okay. we just went through. So you can see how that was oh, yeah. mostly engine at the time. I'll get a picture of that. Very cool. And our engine now is much smaller than that one, fortunately. Yeah. So uh, we reclaimed some of the space for more cabinets, more counters. What are these? Um, we use those as tea trays. Oh, how cute. Look at those. Thank what you. would be under here? I will open that up for you, too, because why not? Uh, it's just access to some of the dry gear. Ah! You can see the shaft down there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, uh, not lit very well. And this is the engine room. Which, there's plenty of room if you want to come down. This engine was probably put in the 80s. It's a uh, World War II surplus Buddha diesel. Okay. It's a 180 horse. Um, they used them during the war for all kinds of stuff. Everything from uh, pushing small boats around to generators for powering hospitals mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, it's very difficult to find parts for them these yeah, days. I would imagine so. So we uh, baby her quite a bit. And you can see that is the... Where it goes up the stack. Yeah. Okay. What is the LOA on it? Yeah, we're at 93 feet. Overall. 93, yeah. okay. The water line is 86. Um, 18 foot beam, draws about six feet. Okay. So it's just not huge, but sizable. So yeah, this is this is the payoff for the exactly. old wooden boat, which is a yeah. wonderful view here. Normally you get this from the upper deck also, but yeah. yeah, this is beautiful. And then what would be behind here? Uh, that's just storage now. Originally okay. the crew head. Oh like, really? What? Yes. Which, so you can see how much space they had for that. Yeah. Oh, Again, not quite cloth clawfoot tub territory. And during the summer, how in a normal summer? <laughs> um, how often is it rented? Do you have guests out here basically every night? Always. Really? Always. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're very popular. Um, I don't know if you look at the website, but our, our rates aren't, aren't uh, terribly different from what you would find in other B&Bs around right. town. And yet, 
you're yeah. here. So. Exactly. And how often do you have four different couples who don't even know each other renting rooms in here or something like That's that? It's fairly common. Is that okay? Yeah. The, the times when we don't are usually when the whole world has been rented for an event. For an event. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fre frequently people have weddings on board and they'll even sure. spend the night here and have the wedding party. Okay. So we hope you like this tour. We want to say thank you to Scott, who's one of the volunteers here. This is founded by a nonprofit foundation. So we want to make sure we're going to have people come check out the website and we'll put the link down below and uh, come support them. They, when they are open, they are open for, you can rent it overnight. So you saw the tour there and they're also open for tours. Thanks everyone.